Oh. So hello, I'm uh, Timo Roman from uh, NVIDIA Helsinki. I'm leading the deep learning team, and uh, we have established a team uh, earlier this year. So NVIDIA, as you know, is a world leader in uh, visual computing, and it's probably most known to you uh, from the gaming market, where we're number one. But we are nowadays addressing four markets uh, in addition to gaming. Automotive market, enterprise, uh, graphic solutions, and uh, high performance computing and cloud. There's one common denominator to these four markets is our GPU platforms, uh, graphics processing unique, which brings a tremendous uh, processing power. Today, I will focus uh, on applications of GPUs uh, to automotive and deep learning. And as you know, GPU is one of the enablers uh, of deep learning as we know it today. Deep learning is probably the key to autonomous driving. Every car maker in the world today is looking at deep learning. Self cars are becoming computers on wheels. Uh, Self-driving cars will be better to drive and safer. In the future, we'll see also some totally driverless transportation. Driving assistance systems have been around for a decade. Typically, they consist of blind spot detection, lane detection. Recently, we have seen some um, car detection or lane changing assistance, some rear cameras, front cameras. But these systems only rely on individual sensors. We have introduced earlier this year this DrivePX platform. And it's the first end-to-end -end deep learning platforms and opens the road towards autonomous driving. It allows to perform AI-based visual classification. This means that you don't only detect cars, but you can differ differentiate a moving car from a parked car. You can also differentiate a car from a pedestrian or a school bus. Then the platform also allows uh, surround visual processing it means that you can build a 360-degree view around the car. That's quite useful for self-parking. And finally, we can perform sensor fusion, meaning that we can rely on the output of each of these sensors and fuse them together in order to take uh, decisions and assist the driver. So deep learning brings a revolution to computer vision. On the left side of the slide, you see traditional approaches being built on feature detectors. People have been crafting specific detectors for faces, pedestrians, traffic signs, or cars over the last decades. It takes time, consumes efforts, and is very specific for a given application. With deep learning, we have an end-to-end -end processing pipeline. We can detect much more complex images or even situations. For instance, we could detect that a cyclist is crossing the road or that we have a school bus incoming. This is how a deep learning neural network sees. On the bottom of the slide, you see um, the structure of a deep learning network. But deep learning, typically nowadays, you consider 10 to 30 layers, um, different layers, and uh, the GPU power, processing power allows you to have millions of parameters to optimize. On the top of the screen, you see what the network sees. On the left side, you have the input, the image. As you move forward toward the right side of the screen, you see that the network sees from low-level features up to features to higher-level features with a higher level of abstraction. For instance, in the lower layers, you see that the network detects edges and lines. In the middle of the network, you see that the network detects wheels, portions of the cars, doors. While on the right side, in the higher layers, you can see 
different types of cars and orientations. And the extreme right, you have a classifier, which gives the most probable output given the input image. The amazing thing here is that nobody crafted these detectors, and nobody told the network that a car has actually wheels. But it has been able to extract by himself that cars have wheels. This is the process is called supervised learning. On the left part, you have an offline process. It's called a training process. You have algorithm solver, you have a neural network structure, you have GPU supercomputers, and you have data scientists. We're training the network by showing thousands and thousands of labeled images, telling the network that this is a car, this is another car, and this is yet a third car. Once you have trained the network and optimized it, we get the parameters, which we are loading onto a platform, which is an embedded system uh, on the car itself, and consists here of two processors, two GPUs. As the car is driving, it gets input from the camera, and it's able to detect cars it has never seen before. In the future, we will make use also of semi-supervised learning, meaning that the car could also learn by itself, and in the far future, the learning will be totally unsupervised. This is a, I'll show in a minute a demo that uh, our team has done here in Helsinki, in Royal Lahti, close to our office. We're taking part in an international uh, challenge called Kitty, and um, it's a German database with a lot of uh, cars and videos, thousands of videos taken in Germany. And um, we decided to try to apply our algorithms in Finland to see if it generalizes to cars it has never seen and to a landscape it has never seen. And um, you can see here that it's able to detect cars, even tiny cars, not all of them, cars with different colors, different orientations. And obviously, as you see here, it's pretty good at detecting German taxis. Probably it has seen a lot of them in the training data. Thank you.